Hello, this is Mike at Game From Scratch, and today we're looking at a program called Magica Voxel. Now, what this is, is a voxel painting package. Uh, completely free, available for Windows and Mac. Uh, go to this website, I will link this down below in the comments. Uh, you simply download it. It's, a, um, it's an archive, you extract it. If you're on Windows, you run the .app version. Otherwise, you run the .exe and you're off to the races. Completely free, no caveats on the license. Uh, basically says, free to use, any project, no commercial license required. Credits are appreciated. Uh, so, pretty liberal use there. Now, the first question you might immediately have is, what are voxels? That's a good question, um, and the easy answer, the lazy answer is Minecraft. Minecraft is the most popular example of a game made with voxels, uh, but by no means is it alone, or is it the first. Uh, going way back in time, voxels actually sort of gave uh, traditional 3D polygon models a run for it. Uh, back before we had dedicated uh, polygonal hardware, rendering hardware, um, this was a bona fide alternative to it. There was a company called Nova Logic that used to make a number of games, such as Comanche, a helicopter sim, that used voxel graphics. Now, you can look at voxels as two things. It's a rendering technique and it's a data structure. I mean, you can think of uh, pixels are kind of just a 2D grid of colors. You know, they go together to make an image, and that's what we call pixel or pixel art. And so really, it's just this data structure of 2D color storage. Voxel is kind of the exact same thing, just with a third dimension added. That's literally where the name comes from. The Excel part, the last part of voxel, uh, X-E-L, that stands for pixel. The V-O-L stands for volumetric. So really, it's saying pixels with depth. So you can think of it as a three-dimensional grid, just like 2D pixels, just in three dimensions. And it'll make sense in a second when we fire up Magic of Voxel. Now, one of the nice things about voxels is it's an intuitive way of working for many people. It's sort of like working with virtual clay. And it's an, it's an art style that is kind of on vogue. Like, you know, for the faux 3D uh, game kind of set, for the pixel art, 3D look, you know, it's definitely got a, a, tr uh, a crowd these days, and it's uh, probably a love or hate kind of style, but uh, I'm not going to make any particular opinions on it. I'm just going to show you quickly how Magic of Voxel works. If you like the art style, you like the art style. If you don't, you don't, but it is actually a fairly accessible art style, um, so you can actually get some pretty decent results. Um, with a fairly low skill ceiling. Now, of course, just like anything, like pixel art, like 3D, um, a better artist is going to make better art. It, it doesn't give you skill, uh, but it is an accessible tool, so it's one of those things to be aware of. And here is your starting point. You see you've got this big cube, and basically this is just, you know, let me throw the grid on and it'll make sense. It's a collection of 40 by 40 by 40 voxels, and a voxel, again, is just a 3D pixel. So you see here, it's just kind of a cube in space, and we can, we can color each side of that cube, we can get rid of the cube, and that's about it. So that's kind of what you do when you're working in voxels. Now let's look a little bit about that getting rid of. Here I am in erase mode, like so. I'm going to go to voxel select mode. So you've got your brush selections up here. So voxel face, uh, box, pattern, uh, center, or line modes. So we're going to draw in voxel mode, which is, you know, individual pixels. And we're going to erase. So you'll see right off the hop, when I draw on my mouse, I basically just delete whatever's underneath me. Now we can go ahead and do things like change the size. So we're going to erase five by five chunks at a time. So if you want to rapidly get rid of voxels, you can. And now we're just kind of deleting things out of that space, like so. And this could also be a sphere. So we're going to cut things out in a circular manner. Or we can go back to the single voxel mode. Uh, we've got the other option, we can do it entire faces at a time. Uh, we'll see that very quickly. We can do it a box selection at a time. Which is... So, so you see it's selecting the box as I move the box in and out. And we can also do really cool things like go down an entire axis at once. So see here, this red line represents your x-axis, this blue line is your z-axis, and if we scroll around here, that um, green line there is your y-axis. So what I'm going to do right now is along the x-axis. So I'm going to turn x-axis on, like so. And now our rectangle mode is actually cutting a hole entirely through our surface, like that. So you can do some pretty rapid results. So, so far all we've done is killed things. So let's go ahead and create. So now we're in attach mode. I'm going to turn x-axis off, go back to voxel mode, and you see we can now add on. Oh, did I switch colors? Yeah, I did. So here's your palette. Over here, you can do a fixed color palette. You can open and save so you can just use the colors that you want. And I'm adding red voxels on top. The last thing we can also do is paint. So this is just going to change the color of the face of each voxel, like so. 
And that essentially is the crux of how you do things. Now let's do a really, really, really simple example so you can see it from the beginning. What I'm gonna do is come here to tools and zero out the entire content. So basically I just erased our voxel. So now what I'm gonna do is create a row, pick a grayish asphalty color. I'm gonna come down here into, uh, let's see, I want voxel mode. One is fine, but I want to do it along the Y axis. So the entire Y axis is going to paint as I go. That guy. Oh, I'm still in paint. All right, attach. So this will create for us. And I'll just draw like that. So there is our road. Pretty simple. Now I'm going to do switch over to paint mode. Grab a yellow line and we're going to just do our lines down the road. Now you'll see we're working just like in a 3D program. You can move your camera around however you wish. You zoom in and out. I'm just going to go ahead and, oops, I'll undo that. Turn axis off because I actually only want to deal with individual voxels. And we're just going to do the middle of the road marker. All right, so there is a road. Pretty simple. Uh, what we're going to do is switch over here to face mode and move. So... And then I will just, oops, I do that, hit shift, All right. face mode, not by color, oh, geometry, switch to geometry. move that guy up off the ground like so. So there we created a simple raised road. Now I'm going to just quickly turn this into an ugly little bridge. Go back to volume mode, go back to attach mode, pick a darker color here. Now let's make this two by two and we're going to go along the z-axis and then pop. So basically I just created um, the suspension aspects for our bridge. Go into select mode here, grab the top half and then just delete. So we've got our shape now going on. And now we're going to switch over here to pattern mode. And you can think of pattern mode kind of like copy and place, uh, copy and paste. We're going to switch to rectangle. Uh, and then we're just going to draw a rectangle around that shape we just created. So you see it's now selected. And we're going to say use selection as pattern. So now when I go ahead and draw, as you see, I don't know if I'm even lined. Yeah, I'm lined up not bad. There, now I go back to box mode. Get rid of my original, and then boom, there is a quickly made very ugly bridge. Now what we can do is take that out, go into render mode, and actually turn it, you know, see what it looks like rendered. And the rendered mode has a lot of different options. So you see over here, you got your camera settings down here, so you can set your depth of field, etc. As you change things, the rendering happens up here. You can set the shader to be used. Uh, we can um, turn global illumination on and off, change the image size that it's done, etc. So here is a quickie renderer, and if you want, you can save it, save it out any particular time by clicking that guy. Now, enough of me mangle. Oh, yeah, and we can also change the lighting. Uh, so we change where the lights are located, the number of lights in the scene, uh, how the sky is set up, if there's fog or not, and you'll see the end result immediately on the renderer as it happens. I got global illumination turned on, which is going to make things really slow, but theoretically more accurate. So you can actually go ahead and render your sprites right in this guy. We can also look at it in exporting, and I'll show you that in a second. So now what I'm going to do is go back to model, and I'm going to show you slightly less crap. Uh, so here, we're going to go back to default, and we're going to use some of the guys that are built in. So bring in a model. Uh, here's a knight that they've done. I would actually have called a viking, but, you know, as an example of the kind of characters that you can create in three dimensions, or we can get into levels. So here's a 3D level that they've created. So again, we render that out. Probably turn our fog down quite a bit. And ta-da! So you can use this easily to create tiles for your game, sprites for your game if you wish, and you can actually even use it for animation. So for example, if I come up here and go to their animated selection, and I pick horse, we can pop this guy down. So let me just get rid of these values. All right. So 
Why are you still running with you? Oh, I've got glass shader on. Let's go back to a diffuse shader. So here is your horse, like so. Now, one cool thing you'll notice here when I drop this guy down is we're actually animated. And you see the lighting, the shading is automatically done for you. So you can do some pretty cool work in this guy. Okay, seriously, why is GI still being applied? Ah, doesn't really matter that much. Uh, so that gives you an idea of what Magic of Voxel is capable of, what it's used for. Here you can see a fixed palette in effect. Uh, you can switch between different palette options. So um, you got various different tools over here. So we can do things like uh, rotate along a given axis. So like, like so. Uh, you can flip along a given axis, scale, etc. So you've got tools up here. You can copy and paste. I've actually, you can use uh, Control C, Control V to do so. Um, you get, main thing is that you switch between your modes over here as you're doing so. Uh, so realistically, that is Magic of Voxel. Now, when you're done with it, you come down here to export, and you got to, oh, sorry, I didn't show you MISC. And you can work with different kinds of shapes, like a cylinder, just raw shapes to start from, like so. Uh, but you come down here when you're done and you like your work, you go to export, and you've got a bunch of different options here. Now, the problem with the two most common, well, if you're going to another Voxel app, you can export it as Vox, open it in another thing. You can export it as an OBJ, which is an alias wavefront object. Truth of the matter is the results, the textures on them were terrible. Something's really weird with this export. And I've seen a lot of people actually recommend that you take this guy out in Voxels to another free application that can do, uh, it's not quite as nice for the modeling tools, but it is better for the OBJ export. So I did have a lot of trouble with the OBJ, eh, OBJ export here. But what most of you are probably going to do a lot of times is 2D or isometric. So you can basically export as a 2D sprite or a export as an isometric pixel sprite. So here I'm going to do 2D, and you'll see it just creates um, a 2D file for a PNG file, and it renders out your sprite ready to use in your game or for your art or however you happen to be working. Um, so that's really kind of it. You know, this is one of those things, again, it's just another tool in the toolbox. If you like the style, definitely do check it out. Completely free. Um, you may find yourself really taking to the workflow right away. Uh, the, this brush system is a little bit... Um, confusing at times, uh, but for the most part, you get up to speed pretty fast with this application. Oh, I also missed that you can switch between your various different camera types down here. So if you're doing isometric, uh, you can lock it that way. You can do an orthographic camera, you switch to a free or a perspective camera, uh, where a free camera will actually go off and, yeah, not be tethered to your mod. So basically, perspective and free should actually be like a look at or an orbit and not orbit. Uh, but you will find the camera options are pretty solid and do what you want. Um, so that was it. Hope you found that useful. Again, that's uh, Magic of Voxel available at uh, this website, which I will link in the comments down below. I'm no expert by any means. This is more of an informational thing than anything else. So um, you will probably find much, much, much better tutorials out there, such as uh, possibly this tutorial. Uh, so I hope it did just raise your interest. It's kind of a cool program. It's kind of a cool art style. So if you are looking for a style, um, you may not be the number one artistic soul in the world. This might be an outlet for you, or you may just prefer this style. And this is a great little free tool that, you know, you can add to your arsenal. So hope some of you found that useful. If you did, please do click like. And uh, of course, we do all kinds of game development related content here. And if you're interested in that, please do click subscribe. All right. See you all later.